So this stock is currently at $36.13. It will go up from $36.13 to $52.78. Hey guys, it's January 3rd of 2024 and Yum China Holdings has dropped to the 52 week low and just started to move up and as you know on this channel I analyze fundamentally sound stocks that have fallen down to their 52 week low so that we can take advantage of opportunities to buy them as they move up so I wanted us to go through um Yum China Holdings. Yum China Holdings is actually a subsidiary of Yum Brands. And Yum Brands is the company that owns KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. I believe they have another one as well, Habit Grill. But Yum, Yum Brands, when they moved to China, it seemed that they were so popular, being KFC, Pizza Hut, and um, Taco Grill. They were so so popular that in China, they formed their own subsidiary. And that subsidiary is called Yum China Holdings. It's a subsidiary of, of Yum Brands. and they're now with their 52 week low we want to look at them so if we look at 2018 they were at a low price of approximately 29 high 45 so they went up 53 percent that year the next year at the low price 31 high 47 they went up 49 percent so third year they went up 54 percent fourth year 46 percent fifth year 59 percent i don't have the 2023 figures yet but i'm gonna give you the um figures from 2018 to 2022 so we can make a judgment call on this stock so if i look at this stock just gonna look a few years so in 2018, the low PE for this stock was 16.61. High PE was 25.47. So it's a difference of about nine. Here it's a difference of around eight. This one is a lot more. It's like 21. And this one is a difference of nine. I'm not going to count 2022. So, currently the PE is at 19.53. I'm going to say 19.53 plus 9. That gives me 28.53 times the earnings per share, which is 1. Point eight five. That's fifty two dollars and seventy eight cents. So this stock is currently at thirty six dollars and thirteen cents. And if the PE were to go up by nine, like it did in at least two of the previous five years. The other one, it went up by eight. And the others, it went up by more, considerably more, around 10 more. But if it was to go up just by nine, it would go up from $36.13 to $52.78. So here we see the low and high prices for the year, the low and high PE ratios. And we just said where it can go up. 
Now let's take a look at the fundamentals. And if we look at the income state, in 2018, they made $8,415,000,000. And after paying all expenses, they retained $708 million in profit. And that is a profit margin of 8.41% which is not great, but it's decent. It's not low like two or three or something. It's not high like 20% or so, but 8.41% I would consider decent. In 2019, they made 8,776,000,000 overall in sales, and they returned 700, retained 713,000,000 in profit after paying all expenses. That's a return of 8.12%. 2020, 2020, they made $8,263,000,000 and they retained $784,000,000. That was a profit of 9.49% increasing. In 2021, they made Overall sales of nine billion eight hundred and fifty three million, and they retain nine hundred and ninety million in um profit after paying all expenses. That's a ten point oh five percent return. Now, not sure what happened, but in twenty twenty two they made nine billion. 569 million a little less than the previous year but not much but they may have had a large expense that year they only retained 442 million for a profit margin of 4.62 percent that year so the amount of money that they retained after expenses was less and thus their profit margin was less but i'd still say pretty solid numbers i have to see why they dropped in 22 but still solid numbers shareholders equity and debt to equity so their return on equity was 23.79% in 2018, which is pretty good. 22.46% in 2019. 12.14% in 2020. That was COVID lockdowns that year. Not sure what happened, but we know that was the COVID lockdown year. It was... 12.52% in 2021. It didn't move up much from where it was in 2020. And then it was 6.18% in 2022. So it dropped. We want to see what's happening with those figures going into 2023. But looking before we go down, let's look at the debt to equity. Debt to equity is 54.91%, 118.90%. If we see the debt to equity over 200%, we get concerned. It was 68% in 2020, 67 in 2021, and 65 in 2022. So their debt to equity is pretty decent, which means their balance sheet should be pretty decent. And we want to see the current assets exceeding the current liabilities every year, which they are, and the total assets exceeding the current the total liabilities which they are so 
So their balance sheet is pretty good. Next, we come down to the cash flow statement. They didn't really have changes in the long term or current debt showing on there. But the positive sign we see will actually, we like to see companies paying down stock, which Yum China Holdings did in four out of five years. In 2018, they bought back 307 million worth of stock. 2019, they bought back 265 million worth of stock. 2021, they bought back 75 million worth of stock. And 2022, they bought back 466 million worth of stock. That's what we love to see. But what is a concern is in 2019, they sold 2187000000 million worth of stock. So we don't want to see them selling more stock. We want to see them buying back stock. But they bought back stock four to five years, but sold a considerable amount in 2020. And that was the COVID lockdown year, guys. That's it. Now, when we come down to free cash flow, 2018, 863 million. 2019, 750 million. 2020, 695 million. 2021, 442 million. And 2022, 734 million. Now, this company gives a dividend. And one of the things I find most significant about the free cash flow for companies that give dividends is do they still have money left over? after they pay their dividend. So I just told you how much free cash flow they had. Now we want to look at how much free cash flow they still have after paying the dividend. 2018, 666 million. 2019, 537 million. 2020, 567 million. 2021, 182 million. And 2022, 460 million. So they do have enough free cash flow to cover their dividend. And the dividend is small. As you can see, the dividend yield is 1.44%. And that last dividend they gave was only. 13 cents a share. But you want to see what the company's, how much free cash flow they have compared to how much dividends they're giving out. Because if the free cash flow is not increasing, they can't increase their dividend much more because they don't have the free cash flow to pay those dividends. This company has enough. And um, if we look at their book value, it is 15.83. I'm not as concerned about the book value as long as I see them buying back more shares of stock every year instead of selling more shares. So their book value is 15.83 and their PB ratio is 2.28. 0.19% of their shares are owned by 
insiders, those who work at or are involved in the company. But even though that may seem like a small number, that's 0.19% of 406.71 million shares. Okay. Um, and the float, 385.18 million. So that's those are the shares that are public publicly available, and that's about it. So that's our analysis, or it's my analysis for Yum China Holdings. I wanted to break down the analysis on this stock because it's mentioned in this week's winning stocks special edition. I dropped a special edition midweek. And it's in that, as well as it's mentioned in this week's option picks, because I actually purchased the option for um, Yum China Holdings in this week's option picks. So that's my analysis on that. If you guys have any other questions on it, please just drop a comment and I'll get back to you. And have a great day.